Hey everyone, my name is Akara, and welcome to Let's Play Fragile Dreams for the Nintendo Wii. Fragile is a survival horror game set in post-apocalyptic Tokyo. It was developed by the Venus and Braves team at Namco Bandai in collaboration with members of Tri Crescendo, most notably the makers of Bata and Kaitos and Eternal Sonata. The game was released in Japan in January of 2009, then made it to the US and European markets in March of 2010. This is my first Let's Play, so hopefully you enjoy it. Let's get started. At the very end of a summer that was all too short, the old man I was living with passed away. Even after all the years we spent together, I never knew his name. Later that evening, I dug a shallow grave in the front yard of our home and buried him there. At that moment, I was truly alone in the world. Hmm. Maybe I'll find something he left behind. It's so dark I can hardly see. If I crank open the dome, then I can let in some moonlight. Well, uh, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go do that. And if we go up the stairs and around the balcony, over the probably multi-million dollar telescope, over here, we will find... Hey, look. It's... his flashlight. Now that we have the flashlight, uh, we can finally take a look around this place. If we were to try to look around at all without it, it would just keep going, oh, it's way too dark here. I, I, despite living here for 10 years, I, I can't see a damn thing. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, if the flashlight was found in Grandpa's bed, this must be our bed. Um, and other than that, it looks like a Nice little rundown observatory, I guess. I don't really know where they've been keeping their food. This all looks like dishes and soy sauce. Unless they just eat dishes and soy sauce. I've always wondered what this weird box was. It looks like a mirror, but... Alright, well, uh, so I guess we're stuck with a flashlight as our only light source. I wonder what they used when the flashlight ran out. The moon, I guess? It's a record of my growth. I don't remember him doing it every year. If you looked closely at that, it, it showed 
uh, that it started at age 5 and continued up to age 15. So that should give you a good indication of uh, how long Seto has been living here and also how old Seto is. Here on these bookshelves, we see a couple of books about uh, how awful artificial intelligence is. Uh, it looks like there's nothing here. This was his library. A lot of these books are over my head. Well, he is short, so... It looks like there's at least one row worth of books that are over his head. Awful lot of books about Glass Cage. I can't believe that seven volumes is a summary. And Pirate Isle, right in the middle of it. Hi, kitty. Hello? Bye, kitty. Speaking of kitty, apparently the guy liked cats. Like there are any books to check out here, or here, or here. No books. I mean, no books that we can read. Stubborn little things. I thought they were all dead, but I see at least one survived. Who's there? Who are you? How'd you get in here? Why should I answer? I have no idea what this thing is supposed to be. Uh, it's like a pink blob with a flexible mask on, apparently. Well, uh, as rude as he was, he doesn't really seem to be doing anything other than just floating there. So... Pathetic. Such a useless creature. What... what are you? I do not have to answer to you. See if he dropped anything. Hopefully we can use that fire door to get out of here. Are there any books back here that... No books here, but there's something right here. By the time you read this, I'll already be gone. Before, I didn't really care if I was dead or alive. I never considered myself worthy of living and yet I knew not even death could atone for my sins you have no idea how hard it was for me to even write you this letter it's strange really for having wasted so much of my life now that the end is finally in sight I never dreamed I'd feel like this. Only the time I spent with you gave meaning to my worthless life. Only now do I regret that I didn't open my heart to you more. Why is it, as I say goodbye, that I'm brimming with so many things I wish I could have said to you? Please forgive this foolish old man. Head east of here. And you will reach a tall red tower. I can't promise, but there you might find other survivors besides yourself. When I am gone, 
You must go east. Now go. And Seto. And Seto. Thank you. For everything. You can kind of look around in here, but there's absolutely nothing to do except this cutscene. Are you okay? I hope she's not dead. You touched me. Yeah, but... Well, I was just making sure you were still alive. 
I don't know you. Well, no. But I'm... I touched her. No, wait! Don't go! On my journey through the world, all of the people I thought I saw slipped away like they were just a mirage. But that girl, her cheek was warm to the touch. I was 15 years old at the end of that summer. When we met, the tower in the distance was bathed in crimson light. That one encounter changed my lonely world in ways I never could have imagined. The brief moment we shared transformed me to my very core. Even now, I remember it like it was just yesterday. The stuffy, humid air, the last vestige of summer. Her silver hair fluttering in the breeze. The big silver moon. We find ourselves in I have what I guess must be a train station. Bunch of posters to check out. Over there. Same thing. Functioning. I am not completely waterproof. Please help me. Is someone there? Yes, over here. I am here. Please, come quickly. I am here. Please help me. Find the source of the voice, but first, let's take a look around. One thing that this game does a lot is it creates ambient noise based on where your your remote is being pointed. So right now, they're expecting us to look around the train station for the source of that voice by pointing our remote around the area and walking towards where the voice gets louder. That's something that we're going to spend a lot of time in the game uh, working with. Please it's kind me. of like a big part of the mechanics. Anyway. Welcome to Azabudai. You can see the platform down there. I, I guess this must be where the voice is coming from. Please help me. I am in danger of malfunctioning. Anyone? It's coming from the other side. If I crouch down, I should be able to squeeze through. I am in danger of malfunctioning. I am not completely waterproof. Now that we're on the other side, some storage lockers. Malfunctioning. I am the not. Voice definitely seems like it's coming from that door. So since there's nothing else to do, I am in danger of malfunctioning. Let's see what's in here? Warning: 
I am not completely waterproof. Please help me. I am in serious danger of malfunction. Warning. I am not completely waterproof. Hello. I am a personal frame. An interactive digital assistant equipped to respond to my user's emotional state, whatever it may be. Hey there, my name is... Let us save introductions for later. We are in danger in our current location. I will quickly navigate a route to safety for us. A route? Navigate? We must hurry. Uh, okay. First, fasten me to your back. <sighs> like this? Did you fasten my sides until they made a clicking sound? N you mean these here? Good. That should do. I am a personal frame, or PF for short. My primary function is analyzing whatever situation my user is in, and offering a sound solution. Well, I don't know, but I don't think we should stay here. Of course. However, there is more I must tell you about later. Alright, let's check this place out before we take off. Uh, I right. guess it must have been an office or something for the station workers a lot of knocked over lockers and um hmm. Some drawings on the wall i take it this back here would have been like the station director's desk or something huh Those eggplants? Hmm. Oh well. You should be able to build a fire there. I believe that a fire will keep adversaries at a distance. When tired, it is also useful for resting. Oh, I guess you're right. Good idea. Let's go make a fire. Why not? So, do you feel warm? Yeah. It feels good. I know we must evacuate. But I am picking up signs of dangerous enemies nearby. This stick should do the job, right? That will suffice for the time being. But it would be in our best interest to acquire something more durable. Oh, hold on one moment. There should be something serviceable as a weapon ahead. Investigate, but exercise caution. Right. So normally in Fragile there are a bunch of tutorial pop-ups all over the place, but I've been taking them out because I think they're too disruptive. Instead, here's a video where I'll tell you all the important bits. Fragile's primary intent is discussing feelings of loneliness and isolation through the lens of exploring a barren post-apocalyptic metropolis. Every inch of the game contains examples of this, either through the remnants of what was or messages left by other survivors who have come before us. The game provides both third-person and first-person modes, so players can examine everything at their own pace. Many of the objects in each area will show descriptions when you zoom in on them, and ones with particular interest will result in a ripple effect on the cursor and a vibration of the Wiimote. Furthermore, things like interactable objects, key items, inventory items, and the like are highlighted by a gathering of fireflies circling the object to attract our attention. The flashlight is certainly useful in helping us explore the game's environments, but it also proves its worth in combat as well. Certain enemies can only be seen once you shine light on them, and if you do this for long enough, a miasma-like effect will begin to roll off the enemy, indicating it has been slowed and can be more easily defeated. 
Speaking of defeating enemies, Fragile has three weapon types, one-handed, two-handed, and projectile. One-handed is the most common and most versatile, balancing a faster attack for less damage. To get the most out of one-handed weapons, timing is essential. A three-hit combo is possible if you attack again at the moment your blow lands, and if you do it right, you'll see effects changing from blue to yellow to red, indicating successful combo. Two-handed are much more powerful, but as you can imagine, they suffer from a long wind-up. Instead of a combo system, you hold the button down to charge your attack. The longest charge-up is an overhead swing which hits a wide range of enemies, while simply tapping the button will perform a basic thrust attack. If you hold attack for just long enough to begin the charge animation, then let go, Seto will do a dashing strike for additional damage. The biggest problem with two-handed weapons, though, is their slow speed, especially when dealing with agile enemies. Long attack animations and recovery times will leave you vulnerable, and it can be difficult to judge a group of enemies' movements in order to use the more powerful strikes which two-handed weapons offer. Finally, projectile weaponry. The main benefit is obviously their long range, but they also tend to attack much more rapidly than melee thanks to a short recovery time. Because of this, ranged weapons can often be used to stun lock small groups of tough enemies for safe dispatch. Like two-handed weapons though, they are not the best choice for fast enemies or large groups, since it takes so long to aim with the Wiimote. Over-reliance on ranged weapons can easily ruin your day, and sometimes it's better to just run past enemies if the situation is stacked against you. If you continue to take risks, you'll burn through your HP pretty quick and die, transitioning from blue to yellow to flashing red, resulting in a game over screen like this one which I don't expect to happen in this Let's Play, so I recorded one for completeness. A much more frequent occurrence from combat, though, is your weapon breaking. After each enemy encounter, there is a chance your weapon will break, reducing its damage bonus to a single point. It's important to balance your on-hand inventory so you have room to pick up items as you progress. Especially since the only way to earn money in Fragile is by selling objects you find off enemies. At campfires, you can identify the items you've picked up, buy items to replace your current ones, Organize your on-hand inventory, and transfer items to and from your storage. Now let's see what Seto looks like at this point in the game. As PF was saying, our only weapon is a wooden stick, and along with the flashlight, this makes up all the usable items we've found so far. You can pick up items and rotate them to make better use of your on-hand inventory, and switch between weapons and light sources by moving the icon between them. Briefcase holds records of every item we've found and can give us more detailed information about each one. As you can see, our stick gives us a bonus of 10 points of damage. We have a lot more items to pick up, exactly 100 in all, so that 10 points will look pretty meager in no time. Here on the About Me tab, we can review our mission objective and check Seto's stats and level progression. You can see the plus 10 from the stick he is equipped is resulting in an overall 14 damage per attack. The Map tab is one of my favorite extra touches in Fragile. The area maps on this screen all resemble something made by Seto with whatever markers, stickers, and scraps of paper he finds as we explore the ruins of Tokyo. While we proceed through an area and the game's events unfold, the map will become filled in by Seto's observations, providing an interesting extra bit of insight into our protagonist. Here we can see all the notes he's made about the observatory at the beginning of the game, including pictures of the flashlight, the moon, and the strange masked enemy. With all that out of the way, that'll be it for this first episode. Let's go ahead and save the game. 
and when we come back, we will continue to explore the subway station and figure out what else we can get ourselves up to.